Hallelujah. Tell someone he's alive. No, say it like you mean it. Say he's alive. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, celebrate God one more time before you sit down. Please take your seat if you can find it. Praise God. What a wonderful name that we have been given. It's the name above all names. Um, so I had this whole thing planned out this morning, but of course, trust um, technical guys to form my hand. Um, so this weekend was baptism. Um, how many people were baptized in the house? If you were baptized this weekend, praise God. So I was a bit disappointed um, when I came out for baptism and I saw only the people who were being baptized and people baptizing them available. And then it occurred to me that we don't fully understand what baptism actually signifies and what it stands for. That whole two minutes, two minutes experience, two, three, depending on the person and how deep their sins were, <laughs> um, two to three minutes experience is the whole story of Easter. That thing that happens, that seems like waiting then they do, they don't put them for water. That's why baptism is by immersion, not by sprinkling. Jesus did not sprinkle. He died. He was buried, and then he was resurrected. Okay? So when people are actually getting baptized, it's an opportunity for us all to come out and celebrate what we believe. Because what they are doing is what has happened on the inside of us. So on the inside... We know, okay? We are assured of our salvation. So what those people are doing is that they are publicly declaring what has privately happened on the inside of them. So they believe that Jesus died, and when he died, they died together with him. They believe that he rose up from the dead, and that is why they, they, they proclaim that they are now saved. And so when they are doing that, what they are saying is, I know I've been doing these things secretly before. I know that me and God know, but I have gotten to the point where I can't keep it inside of me again. I need the world to know what Jesus did for me. So when they come out and they are immersed in the water, they are literally buried. The same way Christ was buried. Because you know sometimes we think that the Bible is Bible story. The only reason why we have a Bible is because real things happened and someone recorded it. So Jesus died. It's not film dying. No. It's not Jesus Nazareth movie or the chosen series dying. Jesus really died. He was a human being that came. And for you to understand this thing, you must first understand what happened from the very beginning. This month we're teaching us at, at all cost. And the point is that Jesus came after us and he rescued us, not looking at what it cost him to get us saved. He did everything that he needed to do. Let me start from um, let me start from Luke twenty four. Luke twenty four. So this is after everything had happened. I'm, so I'm starting from the end, and then I'll take you back to the beginning, and I'll bring you back to the end again. Is that okay? I need you to follow me this morning. Is that okay? Okay. So I'm reading Luke twenty four from verse thirteen to thirty five. So I may. Just jump some bits just so that we'll be fast, okay? So what happened was that there were some disciples who were walking on the road. And as they were walking, the Bible says in verse 14 that they were talking with each other about everything that has happened. Um, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself, by this time Jesus had resurrected, okay? So Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. And one of them, named Cleophas, asked him, Are you the only one that is visiting Jerusalem? In other words, are you new here? Have you not heard the things that have been happening? Because these things are not, they, they were not secrets. Jesus was a real human being. Jesus was a real human being that did miracles. People saw him moving about. They also saw how jealous the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees were and how they plotted to kill him. And they also saw how Judas betrayed him. They saw this. This is not, you know, for us, because we're reading the Bible, it's like stories, like novel. This is real, real experience. It's like how I know Agbolo. Maybe a couple of years down the line, he does something very great and leaves a legacy and there's a book written about him. And then people will be talking about him then that there was once a man 
like Namdi Azikiwe and Co. that lived. Do you, how many of you people know Namdi Azikiwe? How many of you were there when he was alive? Is it not what they wrote about him in history books that you know? That's exactly why the Bible doesn't seem so real to us. Jesus did all these things. He walked about with them. Then Jesus died. They saw them kill him. It's not secret death. It's not um, that he was in his room. They hung him publicly on Golgotha. Everybody saw him there, koro koro, naked, hand like. They saw him. They saw them flogging him, dragging him through the streets of Jerusalem. They saw it. And then after he died, they saw him being buried. They, they saw his dead body being carried and they put him inside grave. They saw it. So imagine somebody died. They put him inside the grave. Then they also saw the soldiers that rode. It took about six soldiers to roll the stone. And then they, were, they now mounted guard. Because they didn't want the disciples to come and steal his body. They mounted guard there. They now heard how in the morning, angels came. In fact, they didn't just hear it. Because a lot of things happened. A lot, a lot, a lot of things happened. Because when Jesus died, it was, it was so public that the veil tore in the temple from top to bottom. That exposed the Holy of Holies. You know, you know how those days, it's not like now that all of us have access to the Father because of what Jesus did. And you know, sometimes that's why I think that Christians take for granted some of these things because we don't understand the gravity of what has been done for us. So now all of us can access the Father. It was not so in the beginning. Before you will bring your prayer request, and if I like your face, I will take it in. You will bring it. Me too, I have to be sure that I'm even holy throughout that week that I'm supposed to go to the Father. And then I'm carrying incense. If I have sin and I die, and you're not hearing that incense, that bell ringing, somebody will now pull the rope, and, and I know that I will not have survived because somebody would have annoyed me. I will enter with unforgiveness. I will now fall down. Somebody will now pull me. Story. So you see that your, your, your salvation, your request was dependent on another human being. Also dependent on the fact that whether you had money to buy lamb that was spotless. And then you can buy the lamb and the lamb has scale left and God will not accept that offering. Are you, see, are you seeing that the plenty work that it will take for you to access the Father? And Jesus now de became, the, the, he was the only one that lived and the Bible says he was without sin. Not once. He went through everything you went through. He saw fine girls, he did not sin. He saw money, he did not steal it. He did not lie, he did not cheat. He did not have, any, he did not have one single sin. And because he was born, whew, Hallelujah. Because he was, see, see, what, see, if you understand, if you understand this Christianity, you understand that it's not what we feel on form. It's not Christian, Muslim. It's not, and I mean, this is not to insult anybody's religion, but Christianity itself is not even a religion. We're not, it's in a class of its own. Jesus did not die for you to feel Christianity on your form. Jesus died to give you a relationship with the Father. Means that he died so that you can become a mini-God. You are no longer ordinary. Ah, if you understand this thing, is intoxicating, you know. Sin will not be irritating you. Do you understand? Because you don't even want to tamper with the nature and the righteousness that has been handed to you. Kai. Whew. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, if you understand what Jesus did, you, you won't be able to keep your mouth shut. Everywhere you go. That, you see, that's why the 20 and 4 elders, when they, when they will say, when they worship him, you are holy. When they come up, then think him again. Think what he do. You are holy. That's, 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 it, this thing triggers something inside you. Your life can never remain the same. When you say you are born again, you need to understand what exactly you are saying. What Jesus did, what he went through for you. And so Jesus died, and then that Holy of Holies, he exposed it. He said, these people are making it seem as if, if somebody does not depend on you. He, he, first of all, was born without sin. Because if not, they would have taken another person's blood. The reason why Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice was because he was born without the sin nature. Mary was just accommodation. She was not involved in this matter. His seed came directly from heaven. That's why, because if he had come any other way, he wouldn't have been the sacrifice. He would have inherited the same sin nature that we all inherited from Adam. So Jesus came without sin, now still maintained that life of no sin, and yet decided 
that he that was without no sin would become sin for our sins so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he went to the cross and he was crucified. And as he was crucified, the Bible records that the, the minutes, that 3 o'clock that he died, he died 3 p.m. on Good Friday, that 3 p.m. that he died, he said the, 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 um, the curtain was, the curtain of the temple that leads into the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. The Bible does not make mistake. Why did he say it was torn from top to bottom? Because if it had said it was torn from bottom to top, it could, you can't tell me that it's a human being that cut it. But that thing was so high that it took only God. God ripped it by himself. And they said there was earthquake everywhere. Darkness. This thing is not secret. So that's why they were asking him that, are you the only one that is new in Jerusalem? Are you Elena? How do you not know what's happening? You're asking us what we're just now. But is there another thing that we can just about? Do you hear what happened this weekend? So they were telling him all these things. And then Jesus said, what things? And then they said this about Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what, more, what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning and they did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. They did not see Jesus. See what Jesus said to them. He said to them, how foolish are you? Now, now, Bilena. <laughs> he said, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You know, Jesus was the only person that was prophesied about thousands of years before he was born by different prophets who never met. Moses and Jeremiah did not meet. You need to understand this. So they could not have planned it. They could not have connived. I need you to understand that what... See, well, you're not a Christian because you were born in a Christian home. You're not a Christian because it's the religion that was handed to you. I need you to understand what you are doing. Everything was prophesied. His birth, his life, his death, how he would die. Everything. And so Jesus said... All these things, you have been taught all these things all these years. How are you so slow to actually see that these things are happening? He now said, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. It's nearly evening. Today is almost over. By this time, they still didn't recognize him. But see what happened. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it and began to give it to them. Listen, Jesus had done this same thing. So what Jesus was doing was, remember. And that's what the communion is. It's a meal of remembrance. It reminds you of the covenant. And for you to understand this, you have to go back to the very beginning. Because some people think that, oh, New Testament is where all this started. No. No. From the very first word in the Bible, in the beginning. In the very beginning, God had a perfect plan. That he would make man. He would make this earth. And then he would place man in it to enjoy the earth. And then he would come and have a relationship with us. So he made Adam and Eve. And all the while, he would come down in the evening and they would stroll and they would, geez, that was your day. What did you name today? I saw one thing. I think I'll call it ants. Oh, why? Why are you calling it ants? Oh, the other one that looks like it, maybe centipede. Okay, that looks okay. But what about the other one that has many legs? I don't know. What do you think? Then God says, no, I'm leaving it to you. I trust you, Adam. Now you're like me now, so you know what I'm... Do you understand? That's the kind of relationship they had. It was a daddy-son relationship. They had fellowship. Sometimes, I don't even think they were just Sometimes they were just strolling. Just deep calling to deep. Without saying anything. You, just, you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but sometimes I have those times in prayer. When I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything, but I'm, I'm saying so much. Hallelujah. That's the kind of relationship that he wants with you. And so he set that up. But then he also saw that, mm, it's not good for this man to be all alone, so let me make him a woman. He now took out of Adam, brought the woman. 
So separated what was already in mankind, made man and woman. And then Adam, he said of him to be to continue the fellowship he had with his father also with Auntie, he left her alone. And so if you don't talk to a woman, what will happen? She must talk to someone. And so Satan came. Satan was not legitimate. He didn't have a legitimate right to be on earth. He was cast down, but he didn't have a body, so he didn't have a right to operate here. But of course, he's, he's shrewd, he's cunning. So he took the body of the serpent, and then he spoke to Eve. And said to Eve, did they say, say, fine girl. She said, what? Come. Ma, just tell you something, come. She too, she went. Where is Adam? I don't know. He's somewhere. Maybe with Gerard or something. I said, okay. She said, so that tree, what was it? She said, that tree, ah. They say we should not look at it. We should not touch it. We should not pass by it. Uh-uh. He said, who said? Come near. She came near. He said, did anything happen to you? No. Or you have touched the fruit. Or you have smelled it first. You don't want to touch it. She near and she smell him. See, you already, your nose is already there. You've touched it. Kukuma touched you with your hand. She brought it down. Or you have smelled it. She smells it. Or you have just licked it. Don't bite. Just lick it. Now we say the year to the That's how sin now entered the world. And it wasn't enough. She carried it to go and meet Adam. I don't even want to go into how Adam should have done the right thing, but let's move on. And then she goes to Adam, and Adam compounds the sin because he didn't even now take bite, he now swallowed it. Adam's apple. That's why I know I have tribe members here. Not to like us. And then sin now entered the world. That became a problem. But you see, God had a plan from that very beginning. Because our God can never be stranded. What did I say? Our God can never be stranded. That's why I know you two can never be stranded. Because you are created like you are his child. And you have his very nature. And God told Satan. He said the same thing that you used to think you are going to scatter this world. This same woman. is the same person I'm going to use to bring the remedy back into this world. And then that woman... It seems like, let me tell you the thing about God. God does not wear your wristwatch. So because it didn't happen immediately, Satan thought he had won. So God now tried to keep remedying the situation. When he saw the world was too wicked, he said, let me start again. Called Noah. I know I'll go and build an ark. Noah say, ark? He said, yes, ark. He said, what's that? He said, boat. <laughs> he said, Lord, what's that? He said, something that you build then. God had to explain it to him because they, you must understand that they lived in the desert. And God told him that rain was going to fall. And rain had never... Water used to come out from the ground. Rain had never fallen. So people were laughing at Noah. This, see, I'm telling you because there will be things... And every time you read the Bible, you must put yourself... You must understand the character and the nature of God. So when God is showing you dealings that he had with other men in the Bible, he's not just telling you what happened. He's telling you what can potentially happen. So God can tell you in advance that dollar is going to be so, so, and so. So you go and do this. Because sometimes people read the Bible as if it's a storybook. It is the manual for life. It is the manual for your living. God does not create any... I mean, even human beings don't create anything without manual. Just that won't read the manual, Sha. Uh-huh. But I've never seen anything that they made. They made phone and they didn't put manual there. They will put it even though they won't read it. It's the same way. They let it. God made us and we needed a manual. So when God is showing you things, it is not just for you to know the story. It's because he wants you to see what can potentially also happen and for you to know his nature and his character. And so God started trying to remedy things. Told Noah, Bill, people were laughing at him. And mind you, this building of us did not take two days old. Thousands of years. Bam, bam, bam. Somebody will say, this guy is still never cure. Is still no day okay? Is still no day okay? Ha! What's he building? And the thing is getting bigger. Then imagine animals start coming. Two, two. Ah, it's over. But you know that when Adam, uh, sorry, when Noah entered that ark and everyone entered with him, it was God himself that shut the door. The minute God shut the door, see, that's what I'm telling you, that God always was consistently from Genesis looking for a way to rescue man and bring him back to himself. So God rescued that bunch. And the rain started. It was like play. By the time they started banging on the ark, God don't close door. If now God closed door, who go open them? So by that time, it was too late. And you know, it's the same thing, oh. 
We are shouting now. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. When Jesus does pamparanana and he comes back and he goes, first flight. We can't help anybody again, oh. No. So you must make sure you don't miss that first flight. So he got with Noah, but after a while I found that Noah can't really use this one too. Because I call not let him be great. We moved on from him. And God said, okay, there's still some guy called Abraham. And now promised Abraham, I will give you a son and through you will all the nations of the earth be blessed. When he now gives Abraham that son, he gives him Ishmael and then gives him, well, he got Ishmael and then God gives him Isaac. When God gives him Isaac, God now decides to, you know, because for there to be a harvest, there must be seed. Everything God does is intentional. Remember, we are going somewhere we are going somewhere. Everything God does from Genesis down to Revelation is a rescue plan. And that is all culminated with this Easter. So Easter is not jello fries and chicken. Easter is the very reason why we are here today. Why you are a Christian, why you are in church. Easter is the reason. So God now says, I need this guy to give me a seed if I'm going to give him my son. So he says to him, give me your son. He said, that one is easy. Ishmael! He said, no, I don't want that one. The one you love, the one you suffer to get, that's the one I want. This guy says, Lord, the only way we can do this thing is if we do it while Sarah is still sleeping. So early in the morning, he carried his son. The son was still saying, Father, I see the... <laughs> God, I have, such a, I have such an imagination. Father, I see the robe, I see the wood, I see the kindling for the fire. Where's the lamb? <laughs> Papa said, you born suya. <laughs> You don't even really know. You didn't know what's happening. You are still talking English. Carried boy, 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 go talk. They don't tie him. His father carried knife. As he wanted to kill the boy, an angel just appeared and said, Stop. I see that you love me. Don't kill the boy. He said, God, you did try me. Because I don't, I go just. <laughs> and that's how <laughs> God promised him. He entered into deep covenant with him that day. And if you read Galatians, later on, Paul tells us that it was to Abraham that Jesus was given. So the only reason why we, we can get access to Jesus is because of that connection. So Jesus ties us back to the covenant that he has with Abraham. Kai, what a God. What a God. When you read your Bible, aren't you just amazed? And then that promise was made thousands of years ago. But God still saw that this will still need rescue. You know. He brought Moses. Oh yeah, just to help them. Tell them not to do this, not to do this, not to do that. But when there's law, that's when sin even comes. If they say don't steal, that's when stealing becomes interesting. And so, of course, nobody could keep the law. And with God, 98% is not good enough. 99.9% is not good enough. He cannot behold iniquity. He's a holy God. So you're being good. Your righteousness is still like filthy rags before him. It cannot save you. And God says, if I leave these people, that means that these people will not come back to me. So he said, you know what? Instead of all this, Jeremiah, talk today. Isaiah, talk tomorrow. Nehemiah, Nahum, Jonah. He said, you know what? If you want anything done, you have to do it yourself. So he said, you know what? I'm going to come. So you see this elaborate plan of Christmas. Imagine Hey God. Imagine you have a child just to kill him. That's the kind of love that God has for you. When they're telling you God loves you, you think it's just He brought his son. He came as a human being. You see, even the miracle of Christmas, it blows my mind. How God hmm? first of all, a woman carrying a baby and she's not mad. I don't know about the rest of you, but as a human full human being is inside you. And you are moving about as if it's a normal thing. It's not normal. It's not normal. Then, for God to re 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 I don't know whether it's reduce or remove his glory so that he can fit inside a woman. Common anointing service. Common worship service. Let me even say it like that. Normal worship service. And we're just feeling the presence of God in the room. You know sometimes there, all the hair on your body will stand. It'll be as if your skin is wrapped in church. It's not in church, Abby. It's in church. When Babs was leading worship on mainland, <laughs> I was laughing. He wanted to pull his cloth. He will not remember his church. He will pull it down. 
He push you. He push. That's because the glory. See, there's something called the weight of glory. You, you just, you can't. You can't contain yourself. Then imagine to carry God. He, 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 I don't even know the English. Is there English for it? He, he, I don't know the English, but he, you know, yes, he, he contained himself. I'm not going to say it's contained. It's not really. It's like he's, he shall constrict, const- he shall made himself small. And without that kind of glory, he became human. And that's why the Bible says that he didn't count it robbery. Even though it was equal to God. Because it was a big deal. To become not just a human being. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he stayed in that womb for nine months. Do you know, there are some children that don't even wait for nine months. He behaved himself. No sin. He behaved himself. You know, just tell me, Mama. He stayed nine months. Then came out. And then they did not now give birth to him in a palace. They gave birth to him in a where 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 cows and this in poo poo. Yeah, you are you understanding what God went through for you? And all this thing is not so that he can come and build palace here, so that he can die. It didn't really make sense if you think about it. And so he did he did all of these things. That's why Jesus was saying that are you people are you people not thinking? You are crying about the fact, aren't you recognizing what I actually did? They're talking about the things that happen as if it's gist. It's not for gist. It's for you to understand the power in this thing so you can live it. And so he lived without sin. Came as a human being to pay the price. So the whole reason, see, the, what God was trying to do was fulfill what he said in Genesis. That I'm coming back to get you, Satan. And Satan now said, ah, it's as if this thing has happened though. But you see, he never really knows the full story. So he starts to trigger people. Because when he's panicking, like, he starts to create trouble. Oh yeah, kill every child that is this age. He was still there. Jesus was in Africa. And you know, say, before you go, come get visa to come Africa. Take and say, there's no need. Give now Africa. Leave him. You know, uh, that effort. By that, in fact, he would die by himself. If heat does not kill him, mosquito will bite him. He underestimated God. <laughs> Praise God. I know I'm joking, but the truth of the matter is that these things are so fascinating if you think about it. These things are, are they are mind blowing. And so then Jesus said something. So Jesus told them the whole story. That didn't you don't you know what was going to happen? Until verse thirty one. So okay, no. So before, so after that, by the time he, by the time he it was Passover. So it was important for Jesus to die during the period of Passover because he was literally the Passover lamb. Okay. So the same way that the children of Israel, when God was going to release them. He, he got them to, you know, he sent Moses. I mean, I'm hoping you know the story. But it's important. Every single thing in the Bible, every event is important. It's imp- they're all tied together. So if you just hear Nehemiah, you would think Nehemiah does not matter. Everything is connected. That's how intentional God is. That's why you need to read the Bible. I know that we're in the, social, so in the technology age, but I still like a hard, a hard Bible any day. I can mark it. I can write notes. I can say, oh, is this it? So this white page 24, I'll connect. Study the word. I don't know. I know, and I know every time I teach, I say this, but it's important that you study the book for yourself. It's so important. So he, he had to die at that time. And then when he did the Passover with them, he said, I'm, I'm giving you a new and living covenant. I'm showing you a new way. This same covenant that God made with Abraham. I'm bringing it back here, but a better one. And so he says to them, when you take this body, let it remind you of what I'm going to do for you. So when you drink this blood, let it remind you that my blood was shed as the payment for your sin. The wages of sin is death. Not better behavior. I will say it again. The wages of sin, the payment for sin is death. Not better behavior. Not, oh, I sinned yesterday, so I'm going to behave better today. You don't cut it. He don't really cut it at all. So somebody must die. In fact, if you look at Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4, you will see that God, even when man sinned the first time, God was not running after him to punish him. God was just giving him statement of fact. 
because you have done this, the ground will not produce you. Because you have done this, your husband will be maltreating you. You and you will be struggling to have children. That's what he was telling them. He was not telling them that because you have done this, I now punish you. They were already see where you sin, eh? Sin has consequences. That's what God was telling them. But if you see what happened, they covered themselves with leaves. And God said, this was they won't understand. They don't understand. They think that the payment for sin is better behavior. They say, oh, we are naked. Let's cover ourselves. No, something has to die. Blood has to be shed. Sin is spiritual. Physical acts do not cure spiritual acts. Do you understand what I'm saying to you this morning? That's why you cannot pay for your sin. Only Jesus can. You can't. No matter how good you become. From now, not lie again. From now, not sleep with that man again. From now, not that man again. I will delete his number, my dear. My dear. If you delete that one's number, and not that one will call you. The, 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 the demon with seven more spirits will come back. It's only, only blood. So Jesus, for the first time, look to the Bible. The first time any animal was killed or blood was shed, it was God that did it himself. He covered them with animal skin. Blood had to be shed. God covered them. Because they didn't see if I do, you put leaf. Two days now, this leaf go rot. You are not thinking. So the first leather outfit was God. He killed. There was blood shed. And Jesus was telling them, say, my blood has to be shed for the remission of your sins. But you see, the good part is that I'm not like animals. When I die, I don't die. Mm. Somebody has to catch up with that. He said, the difference is when I die, I don't just die. I'm going to be raised up. And the Bible says that he broke bread and wine. Remember, that was a covenant meal. It was a remember. Immediately he did that. The Bible says in verse 31 that their eyes were open. And my prayer for you, this sister, is that your eyes will be open. He said their eyes were open. Suddenly they recognized him. They finally understood that this person that has been with us, this is what this thing is about. Let me read to you what happened on Easter. We'll end from there. Matthew 28. Let me do 28. Matthew 28 from verse 1. Yeah. Okay, no. Before that, let me do Colossians 2. Give me Colossians 2.15. Now, a lot of people ask, so what happened between Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. Was Jesus just in the grave? Absolutely not. If you see the walk, that Saturday that you think he wasn't doing anything, between that Friday, 3 p.m. that he died, and Sunday morning, if you know that, in fact, that is the real is resurrection. Resurrection is to show us that I have power over death and you will live again. But there was something that was done in between that is so important. Look at Colossians. In fact, let me start from 11. 11. It says, In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off where you were circumcised by Christ. Verse 12. Having been buried with him in baptism. Remember that's what I was talking about at the beginning. Do you remember? It says, In which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Verse 13. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. 14. Having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Now look at verse 15. So from that point when he nailed it to the cross, see what he did? He went into hell. Hmm? He went to meet Satan where Satan was. Ah, that's why I don't understand. Child of God, we are running away from Satan. Is that girl is demonic. We, <laughs> she will, if she comes, she will never try it with anybody again after she encounters you. He said he disarmed the powers and authorities. And he made, and this knife is not really sweet in me. Give me TPT. God will bless you, my brother. You know what we're saying. He said, then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness. So he went into hell. He went to their territory. Eh? Ha. And then he stripped away from them every weapon 
and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. So we are free. That's why there is therefore now no condemnation as far as you are in Christ Jesus. He has no right. Hey, see, how can you not read the Bible? Oh, how how are you? How do how are you? How are you feeling? How are you? Hey, see it here. This is what has been given to us, and you're walking about afraid of this idiot called Satan. Whether it's using human beings or not. Hey, I will not try it again. After today, your eyes will be open. He says, and by the power of the cross. Jesus led them around as prisoners. So he chained them together. Oh yeah, Satan, frog jump, frog jump. Oh yeah, one, two, one, two. They, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. See, it's in a procession of triumph, of victory, he was not their prisoner. They were his. As he entered hell that day, Satan must have felt like we don't win. Ah, but when he entered, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. You know when... Uh, What's that thing? I'm not going to know now. What's that, that I'm not watching that thing where they do those days? Terminator. I'm, I'll be back. So when they, when they killed him on the cross, he told him I'll be back. When they meet for hell. Ah, yeah. Satan said, which kind of world love is this now? If he had known, he would not have crucified the king of glory. Ah, And then after he did this, he collected the keys of death and the grave. And then he rose up. Let me show you something. This is my, this is my favorite, because I do life fight, but this is my favorite part of Easter. Let me tell you what happened. Matthew 28, verse 1. It says, after the Sabbath ended, at the first light of dawn, on the first day of the week, that Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to take a look at the tomb. Suddenly, the earth shook violently beneath their feet as the angel of the Lord Jehovah descended from heaven Lightning flashed around him and his robe was dazzling white. The guards were stunned and terrified, lying motionlessly like dead men. They fell under the anointing. Then the angel walked up to the tomb, rolled away the stone and sat on top of it. I, I don't know, have you thought before where you draw lines? You say if they born you were, eh, cross this line. That's what Jesus did. The angel came down and rolled away the stone. They couldn't do anything about it. One angel came. See, Jesus could not have rolled that stone away from inside. The way the stone was sealed, it was rolled to cover it. Then there was a seal placed on it. Pilate's seal was placed on it. Meaning it could not be opened without Pilate's permission. One angel. If you not even be the one way, maybe not the one way they learn work. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! He came down, rolled the stone away, That means that you are forever free. He didn't roll the stone away and go away, meaning that Satan can come and send somebody and they roll it back. He sat on it. He said, Satan, I dare you. I dare you to touch my brothers and sisters. And then when they finally saw Jesus, Jesus said something. He told the women, he said, go and tell my brothers. Listen, that's the whole essence. Sin makes you lose your identity. When they sinned in the beginning, they lost their identity. They forgot who they were. If they had remembered, they would have run back to their father. Every child knows, even if you offend, your daddy still got you. Ah, they know that. So they ran away from him. But when Jesus now brought us back into the fold, he told them, go and tell my brother. Hi. Is there anybody grateful for what Jesus did? Does anybody understand what happened at Easter? You need to jump to your feet this morning. I want you to begin to thank God. Ah, thank him. See, the stone has been rolled away. The stone has been rolled away. The stone has been rolled away. That thing that has kept you where you have been for so long, it has been rolled away. I announce to you this morning that you have been set free. The stone has been rolled away. I said the stone has been rolled away. I need you to lift those hands to heaven. Ay, Yakabo Satambra Halegerishta. Ombra da Kadus Satalia Mambra Halegerishta Brahalosa. Yeke Mando Kose Telia Mahalegerishta. Imbra Dosa. Listen to me. Listen to me. When the women got there, they said, Who are you looking for? He said, He's not here. 
his reason just as he said that word just as he said it is so important because if he did what he said it means he will always do what he said and that's what I want you to go away from this service knowing that we serve a God who does not just say but he does and if he says it he will do it he rolled that stone away he paid the price for your sin so that your life will never remain the same so this morning before we pray the final prayer is there anybody here who is just for the first time understanding what actually happened and now gets why they should give their life to Christ listen the payment for sin is not more good behavior the payment for sin is death Jesus has died it's like going for a buffet you get there you want to pay they say oh there are 20 tickets free if you're interested you say no I don't want I want to pay for my own my own food why did this swear for you why why do you want to be unhappy and unfortunate in life it has been paid for it's been paid for I said it's been paid for so this morning I want to invite you to give your heart to Jesus come boldly I come boldly it's been paid for I don't care how much you have in your account come boldly I don't care how bad your sin is come boldly it's been paid for I want to quickly pray with you I know that I've taken so much time honestly I don't even know how much time I took but I really wanted to lay this foundation so somebody will understand why we are in church why we are Christians why we preach the gospel this is the good news guys we need to take it out there. Hi. Only you can go to heaven now. So is there anybody? Let me quickly pray with you before we pray that our eyes will be open because our eyes need to be open, man. Is there anybody? It's not a time. I'm not going to cajole you. It's free. It's free. So if you want to give your life to Christ, please just raise your hand. Let me see that hand. Please just come out boldly. Come out boldly. Let me pray with you this morning. Come on, celebrate God. You are now a part of the family. Hallelujah. It's been paid for. Satan can't accuse you anymore. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate God. Hey, Kaya Boshaka. We praise God. We give you praise. Oh, hallelujah. Please just put your hand on your chest. Simple prayer. Listen, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that he died for you and that he rose again. All these things I've said to you, if you believe it and you confess it, that you'll be saved. So say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I cannot pay for my sin. I thank you because you have paid for me. I believe that Jesus died and that he rose again and that today I have been set free. Payment has been made for my sin. I declare with my mouth that I am now born again. I am now a child of God. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Um, please just follow this, this lady on the side. She just wants to talk to you for a few minutes. Come on, just celebrate God. You don't know how much celebration is happening in heaven right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.